All right, this demo video will show you the new features in Setlist Maker 3.1. The first thing is that when we edit songs, we now have the capability to add formatting to either the lyrics that you've entered for your song or the notes that you've entered. I've got some lyrics set up for my song here, and as you can see, I have uh, little headings showing who's singing each verse. I'm going to put those in bold first of all. I'm just going to select this text and then tap this new bold button that's here and I can go down to the next line etc. I've also got a note here that's a little spoken line. I'm going to italicize that and if I wanted to I could even uh, put the different verses in different colors as a better way to indicate the different singers. I can select my text and then this last button on the uh, formatting toolbar is a color picker. This brings up a list of colors and I can select a color for the selected text. The notes field works the same way. I'm just going to uh, put, um, for purpose of demonstration, I'm going to put capo in italics. And now I can save my song, and if I view the notes for my song, I can see my formatting. I don't think that shows up on the video, but capo <laughs> is in italics. And when I view the lyrics, I see all my formatting here as well. Now those are the formatting options available when I have just text lyrics pasted in to a song. If I've attached a document to a song, I now have some annotation options that let me draw notes directly onto the document. In this uh, document viewer in the main window, I have a new annotate button. And when I tap that, it brings up a toolbar with a few different tools. I'm going to pick the red pen tool and I'm going to uh, cross out this first because I don't want to sing it anymore. And then I'm going to use the blue pen tool to switch the order of a couple verses. And then I've got, I've got some highlighter tools as well that I can use to highlight uh, something that I might be likely to forget. Uh, when I tap the X button, the toolbar goes away and the annotations are saved. And if I'm syncing between devices, uh, my annotations will sync to my other devices at this point as well. If I want to remove annotations, I can tap the eraser icon, and then I can either uh, wipe across uh, annotation, or I can double tap and remove all the annotations. Now let's look at the window where we edit the songs that are in a show. I'm looking at a show here, and I've got a songs button at the bottom, and this is the window where I can add songs or rearrange songs. One new feature here is that I now have a drag handle on the breaks that are between my sets and so if I want to I can just move a set break around and that can be easier than moving all my songs from one set to another. I also have a new button at the bottom of each set next to add songs a new button called add pause and this does just what it says it puts a pause into my show and then I can position that so I'm going to put a pause between uh, my second song and my third song. And then when I save my show and view it, I see a thicker line between those two songs. This doesn't really do anything, but it can be a useful organizational tool. For example, if I want to play a few songs in a row without stopping, and then do a little pause to introduce the band uh, before going into the next uh, chunk of songs, I can use that. It's not the same as a set break where the band leaves the stage and takes a longer break. This is just a a little pause breaking up the flow of the show. If you don't see a need for this, then that's fine. You don't have to use it, but a lot of bands have asked for a way to indicate this kind of a structure in their shows. Now there's another new feature I can use when I'm editing the songs for a show, and this is related to the pause that I just added. When I tap the Add Songs button, I now see a new button at the top called Shows, and this uh, brings up a list of all my previous shows. And if I tap a show here, uh, the songs from that show load into my 
list. Instead of just seeing a list of all the songs in my database, I now see a list of songs in that show in order. And so now if I want to bring in some songs from that previous show, maybe a chunk of songs that works well together in the same order, I can go through and select a sequence of songs from that show and then save and they'll be inserted into my new show in that same order. This is kind of hard to see because I just have a sample database here with a few songs, but uh, hopefully that makes sense. And uh, regarding the pauses, I will see my pauses in here. So if I have a show that's built up of several different chunks of three or four songs each, I can see where the pauses are and then I can just select the three or four songs in that chunk and add the same chunk to my new show. Now right now I'm, I'm viewing the songs from just a particular show. If I tap this button again, which now says all songs, it'll take me back to the default view of seeing all the songs in my database. There's one more way that pauses can be useful. Some of you have asked for a way to have recordings play continuously in the perform window. As you know, uh, in the perform window, if you play a recording, it gets to the end and stops. But some of you want to have your backing tracks just play from one to the other. Of course, you wouldn't want them to play through your set breaks, though. And you might have pauses in your show where you also wouldn't want them to play. So you can now uh, make your uh, recordings play continuously until they hit either a pause or a break. Uh, you have to do something to set this up. Let me show you how it works. I'm going to leave the perform window and go into settings. And there's a new menu here called automation. And at the bottom there's an option that says select next song when a recording ends. I'm going to turn that on. And then I'm also going to turn on the setting that was always there called play recording. And save. Let me uh, just rearrange the songs a little bit here for demo purposes. I'm going to um, put my second and third song, and then a pause, and then my fourth song, so you can see how this works. Now we can go into the Perform window, and I have a song selection action set up to play a recording when I select a song. So I'm going to open the document for this uh, My Second Song. That's going to start the recording playing. So here we go. And this is a three minute recording, so I'll cut the video and I'll check back in with you when we're close to the end of the recording. Okay, we just have about 30 seconds left. When we get to the end of this recording, you're going to see the next song uh, get selected automatically, and then that in turn is going to trigger uh, the next song's recording to start playing. You know, sister got rubble, mom got dust. Okay, so the next song is playing. Um, you can see that the song after this is a break, and so we would expect everything to stop when we get to the end of this recording. So let me cut again, and I'll check in then. Okay, we're coming to the end of this recording. And after this song is a pause, so Setlist Maker selects the pause, and the sequence of recordings stops here. So when you're uh, ready to start your next chunk of songs, you can select the next song manually, and that will start the sequence going again. Let me show you another new feature here in the Perform window. Uh, a lot of you have asked for a way to uh, pick songs on the fly uh, that aren't in your predetermined show. So if you get a request, or if you just decide to go in a different direction with it, um, you need a way to go off the off the set list and so the way to do that now is with the new button in the lower right corner labeled songs and when you tap that button it brings up a list of all the songs in your database and uh, you can just tap one and it will be inserted into your show uh, right after the last song that you selected so we were at this break earlier and so uh, this song I chose 
popped in right after that break. If I don't have a song selected, uh, I will go in at the end. And actually, you could just go into the perform window with no songs and just uh, pick your songs as you go. Uh, but then when you leave the perform window, all the songs that you added will be saved. So then you do have a record of what songs you performed in that show. Here's another new feature in the perform window. This is for those of you who are using auto scroll. I'm going to uh, select the next song and that's going to start a recording which I'll then stop. Okay, and uh, you can see I've drawn some annotations on this document in the past. Uh, but you'll also notice that the document icon now has a down arrow. That's because I have a duration defined for my song and that enables auto scrolling and the down arrow indicates that auto scrolling is available for this song because of the duration is there. And uh, previously you could only start auto scrolling with a song selection action but now you can also start auto-scrolling just by tapping that icon. And you know that auto-scrolling has a pre-roll that allows you to uh, kind of read the first part of the document before scrolling starts. And so this is a little more explicit now because the pre-roll is shown by a countdown timer that appears when I start the auto-scrolling. So five seconds to go and then you'll see the document actually start to move. Okay, now the timer starts over again and it's counting down again, showing the duration until I get to the end of the document. Just like before, if you want to manually override the position, if it's going a little too slow or a little too fast, you can just drag with your finger and it will continue scrolling from the new position. Um, but unlike before, you can also just simply pause the auto scroll by tapping that icon again and if you tap it again it will continue um, and you notice the countdown timer kept going so we're at one minute now and let's wait a few seconds and now we're at 55 seconds so the timer keeps counting down even though you have stopped the scrolling uh, so you'll end up getting to the bottom at the same point uh, you can also stop and start the auto scrolling with a hardware input device with a foot switch or you can just start it with uh, the song selection action as before. Let me show you one other feature and I'm going to have to go to a different database to show you this because this database only has five songs. Let me go to one of my band databases, uh, the How Long Jug Band. And remember the uh, button I showed you that lets you insert a song into a show while you're performing. Let's go down to the bottom of the show here and I'm going to tap that songs button. Well uh, that uh, list, now that I have a full uh, normal amount of songs in it, now shows a search button at the top and I can enter any data that's in my song, whether it's the title, the artist, the notes, or one of my custom fields and the list will narrow down to just the songs that match that entry. So this is a real quick way to pick a particular song to add to your show. If I change my mind, I can uh, X out that search and get back to my full list. And this search button now appears uh, lots of places throughout the app. So in my shows list, uh, in my songs list, etc. And uh, in all these places, I can either um, I can either tap this search button that's at the top or I can simply pull the list down to see the search field. So, I, I've been working hard on adding the features you've been asking for, and I hope these are all helpful to you.